Advance the colors. dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the Retire the colors. He, he was very smart. Uh, he, he had a lot of experience. He had served on a lot of ships and stations. And he, his personality, when you met him, uh, he was approachable. It didn't matter if you were a seaman or if you were an admiral. You knew this was a guy that you could talk to. You know, we stand on the shoulders of giants. Without him, without the generation of, of him, uh, we wouldn't be here. He got it started. I mean, he proved the need for advocacy. He immediately showed the use and value of this office and how little visibility there was down through the cloud as you look down uh, to the water below. Once the leadership at this level saw what it was they didn't see, they realized they couldn't leave without it. If he had not done that, if he had met with resistance and went, this is just too hard, I'm going to sit in this office, drink coffee, and pontificate now and then, and call it a day, we might not have had a second McPon. <laughs> um, but I think the, that what he had to do and what he had to persevere through and the way he did it is the reason that we continue to have this office. When I first reported to Washington, I did not uh, receive support like the first CNO I worked for, Admiral McDonald. I went over and called on him, made a point and called on him, and he told me straight out that he never thought the office should be established to begin with. And I just stepped back, took a deep breath, said, Admiral, the United States Navy enlisted personnel recommend it. Give us a chance. See if we can make it work. He was the top 
enlisted men at the, in the Navy at that time. It was a great choice. When they chose him to be the first Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy. Um, destroyers are really the the epitome of what it seems to be in today's Navy. How do I feel about it? You know, light, nimble, that truest frontline fighting unit of a, of a Navy that can go just about anywhere into any size port and really, you know, show the flag of the United States, so. And we were married uh, December the 16th, 1949. She was my second wife, the Navy was my first. And she has been supportive of the position, of my position to stay. So we'll be uh, celebrating our 50th wedding anniversary in December in Hawaii.